Hey, what's up YouTube? With a full new expansion here, we've had a lot of change to the general sandbox once again, and with a brand new raid right around the corner, we need to know what are the best things in the game that can help us out in the damage department. So here I'm going to go through all the different DPS options that I would recommend running going into the Root of Darkness Day 1 and beyond, at least until another shakeup. To start, let's cover what we used to use. For the past year and a bit, Linear Fusion Rifles, or LFRs, have dominated the weapon department. Um, they combined high damage with high efficiency, which for most situations was the clear obvious choice. The downside of LFRs is the reliance on crits, however, with Divinity providing a relatively free 30% debuff as well as a massive crit bubble, their downside was nullified. Right below LFRs were rockets, and this is entirely due to the strength of Galahorn. With the G-Horn buff, rocket dumps had great DPS, but struggled with their uptime due to how quickly they would run out of ammo. For quicker phases, or in overleveled content, rockets provided a simpler solution to reaching max DPS. A lot of this actually hasn't changed, even with uh, linears getting slashed by 15%. LFRs still provide the best option for long damage phases, or mid-length ones that have a high frequency. And by frequency, I mean like getting back to damage is really quick. Because of their strong ammo economy, they're not so affected by quick or long damage phases which give them a spot to remain in the limelight. On the flip side, rockets didn't receive any sort of nerf and are without a doubt the best general choice to use in most scenarios, but it must be paired with wolf pack rounds. Rockets paired with autoloading and a damage perk like explosive or field prep and clown or even demo rolls are all the primary ones you'll want to use but don't sleep on the ability to track i'm not optimal for stationary bosses moving ones can be quite difficult to land shots on and tracking can be a great tool to guarantee more consistent damage output the new contender in the heavy slot are grenade launchers, which received an added 20% on top of their past Witch Queen buff. The main one here you'd be considering is actually the Regnant from Season of Defiance. Undigo is good as well, however, the ability to get enhanced autoloading and explosive light, plus volatile rounds from orb pickup this season, make the former a better choice. The thing is, Regnant only has actually 5 in the mag. Um, with enhanced autoloading, this won't really matter, but without swaps are either a tad slower each rotation or you just dump two instead of three. For day one, this is a marginal decrease in DPS, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Anarchy is a returning option with this buff and actually does provide a substantial benefit in certain situations, but I'll cover that in a bit. When considering the day one though, rockets will for the most part be better than GLs. So this narrows the heavy slot to three things, either a long damage phase where LFRs are the play, most other damage phase style would be rocket izzy swaps, and then on a rare occasion, a parasite plus super combo on really fast burst style ones. In the special slot, Witherward is great, however, only one person can take full advantage of the dot effect. So the other five should run izzy or even RB. Even with the nerfs, which amount to about 7% less damage, RB will still provide a much better option throughout an encounter due to its versatile damage output. RB and Izzy aren't perfect options to pair with a bait and switch cataclysmic either though, so consider something running something like uh, Crafted Succession from Deepstone or Defiance of Yasmin from King's Fall if it makes sense during the fight. Lastly, if there's a situation where ammo is really bad, make sure your team has Outbreak ready to go. Moving to the other topic, we have the character setups, which sort of has two subtopics. With the slight nerf to Divinity, new debuff options have opened up, which is amazing. You could run a Deadfall Tether for a longer 30% debuff, or just stack Weaken Nades with 15%. Hell, even Child of the Old Gods could work as a weekend tool to match Div's percent. However, this doesn't mean Div is bad by any means, and in many cases, I'd still recommend it unless crits are super guaranteed. To get the most benefit, I'd run one or two Deadfall Orig Hunters to maximize your debuff uptime. 
Character buffs are still pretty simple as Bubble and Wells to provide the same 25% damage buff. But Lumina is a unique option to improve this to 35%. Although you will need to use Lumina for at least a little bit to get enough noble rounds. And that slight increase won't really be needed to clear a boss. Still, it could be good to know just in case you need that extra little bit. Radiant is also another option that doesn't rely upon super energy and is great for split setups where you can't have a bubble or well in each spot for your team. With this season's artifact we also receive two other buff boosters that can help out our damage. To start off though, these don't stack with things like well so this is more of an alternative. Prismatic Transfer is the big one which provides a 20% buff to any ally who doesn't match your element. So if I popped an arc super, everything other than an arc based subclass in my group would get that buff. This is 5% less than the typical buff, but definitely still a strong mod to have as a passive benefit. That's the key right there, it's passive, so somebody could go run around and still have that buff for 10 seconds. The other one is dependent on void kills and however many charges of your ability you have, so kind of like surplus. Again, decent as a passive, but not nearly as impactful as Prismatic Transfer. I've also got to talk about Starfire Warlocks and Strand, of course. I'll start with Starfire since it'll be much more common to see within teams. Fusion Spam and Demo Rockets plus Starfire is just as strong as before and is some of the best damage output we can do in the game right now. The best combo is to run Wither Horde with a Demo Primary or Fusion Rifle and then a demo rocket on top of that. The demo rocket should only be reloaded by your grenade input and then swapping back to Wither Horde each time an auto loading proc happens. And the downtime is when you'd swap to your energy and that's just to kind of get more innate energy. If you have a second lock running this or want to have a different setup, Anarchy is a serviceable replacement here. In this case, just stick to Anarchy bolts, then swap to ideally either a demo or auto loading sniper. Two examples with demo are the aforementioned Succession and Defiance of Yasmin. Strand may also have some play, although this is a bit more extreme. With the reload fragment on Strand, Honor can make an infinite grapple point which can serve to reload your weapon. I think a simple swap of Izzy, Reload, Rocket, Grapple, Rocket, and then have auto reload proc on your rocket before swapping back and redoing the cycle is a more realistic uh, setup in a day one damage. You can also throw on a demo rocket to boost the rocket spam even further, um, but ultimately I don't think it's super necessary and it's kind of similar to running a fuel prep explosive hothead, but just adding in free Izzy shots. At the end of the day, this is more likely of a low man strategy than a day one strategy, so I wouldn't harp on this too much, but it is kind of crazy to think about. To end off, I'll talk about the new Font of Might, and this is kind of like the other subtopic I'll say, which is our character damage buffs. Weapon Surges act almost identically to what Font of Might once was, but instead of having Wells, they're more akin to what High Energy Fire was with orb pickups. Each time you pick up an orb with this mod equipped, you get a timed damage buff. One mod is equivalent to 10% buff, two is 17%, and 3 is 22%. So in a day one context, swapping to a bare boots with three of these is definitely the play if you can make it work. To max out these things though, we want things like time dilation or charge up to improve their duration. If you stack three time dilations together, you get three separate 20 second buffs, which is just absurd uptime. If you were crazy, you could have six of these with three charged up mods equipped, but this is totally not needed. <laughs> so just go with one time dilation and see if that's enough. You may need more time, in which case you'll just have to throw on a second one. However, the time of even one is more than enough for most situations. Pairing these mods with Radiant Light and Orbs from a Well or Bubble is all you need to consistently gain an extra 22% damage buff each time you go into a damage phase. So to recap, LFRs are great for long damage phases due to their high ammo efficiency. 
Pairing these weapons with Div is generally advised on more mobile bosses, kind of like Rolk. Rocket swaps with Izzy and Wolfpack rounds are the bread and butter for damage output right now. And I expect most damage phases going forward to use this combo. Stacking a Deadfall Tether, Well of Radiance, and a 3x Weapon Surge buff is generally the best you can do for buff stacking. Although, technically stacking 5 Star Eater Hunters is, of course, another option if you want to. Warlocks with Starfire should pair Wither Horde and Demo Rocket Spam or Anarchy with a Sniper Rifle. Meanwhile, Titans who aren't on Bubble should just think about putting on Curus and Thunder Crashing if possible. And if you really want to go for it, the Rocket Izzy Swap Spam with Strand. I think that about covers all of the best options and how I'd piece them all together. If you want to throw in your suggestions, post them in the comments section. Like the vid if you thought it was neat. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.